when you go boating, you should be prepared for every eventuality, like wearing your life jacket in case you unexpectedly end up in the water. Life jackets, or personal flotation devices, commonly called PFDs, serve a common purpose, and that is to give you enough buoyancy to keep your head afloat above the water. Wearing a life jacket is the most important to fall into cold water. And with the number and styles of life jackets available, it's easy to choose one that'll fit your boating pleasure. It's important to check the manufacturer's label of your life jacket for its intended use. Some provide more buoyancy than others and are thus better suited for offshore uses, while others are better suited for impact activities or paddling. Inflatable life jackets are becoming more popular because of their comfort and low profile. Yet there are times when a life jacket with inherent buoyancy is the better choice. Cold water immersion is not restricted to the ocean. Lakes and rivers can be just as cold or colder, and the effects of cold water immersion just as deadly if you're not prepared. Okay, we'll get these life jackets on. We want you to be nice and safe. Now you know how to get them on, right? Mm -hmm. You know how to do them up? There you go. Find a comfy spot. It's interesting that we as parents work hard to protect our children, but we sometimes forget that it first starts with our own protection. Boaters should always wear their life jackets because most accidents happen quickly and with little warning. There are times, however, especially on larger boats, when emergencies take time to develop. In these situations, boaters may consider donning survival suits. A survival suit is a garment that's designed to keep you dry in cold water and provide you a lot of buoyancy. So not only does it keep you on the surface of the water, but more importantly, it prevents the cold water from touching your body. Water is an excellent conductor of heat, and if your body's in contact with cold water, you'll lose heat to that cold water 25 times faster than to air the same temperature. So the importance of a survival suit is that it keeps you dry if you wear it properly, keeps you on the surface of the water, and they're usually made out of bright colors, so it's easier for a helicopter or a rescue boat to spot. Amazingly, many people are not prepared for accidental immersion into water by already having their life jackets on. They think that if worse comes to worse, I'll just put it on in the water. Well, that's a difficult enough task in calm conditions and in warm water, but in cold water, it's nearly impossible, as you're about to see. Sometimes people grab their PFD and jump in the water because they weren't wearing it, which is a, a difficult survival situation, and now they're faced with having to put it on in the water. Well, you can put it on in the water, but it's very difficult, and the cost of putting it on, assuming you even get it on correctly, is a lot of lost calories to the water. So just imagine trying to hold on to this life jacket with one hand and get it on your body, all the swimming and all the exertion you have to do to get it on, you've lost a lot of calories and decreased your survival time. I didn't think I was gonna get my zipper on. My hands were so cold that I just kept fumbling with it. And every time I tried to wash back, I got water back over my face. So I couldn't see down to see where the teeth, I couldn't feel the teeth. They'll hook it together. If you do end up in the water, it's always a good idea to have a plan on how you're going to get back aboard. If you've fallen overboard, there are several devices that can be used to help you to reboard your boat. Some are built in, like a swim platform or water ski reboarding ladder. Others, like a commercially available reboarding device, are easy to install or can be fashioned with something as simple as a web strap. Generally, the best placement for a reboarding device is in the stern, where the boat is more stable and the engine is close at hand to help you in reboarding. Another essential piece of safety equipment that every boater should have is some sort of bailing device, and could either be a hand pump or something as simple as a tin can. If you do end up in the water, there are several things you can do to increase your chances for rescue. To aid those searching for you, it really helps to have one or more signaling devices. Common types of signaling devices include a signal mirror that can be used to reflect the sun toward aircraft or boats, a pencil flare that can be fired into the sky, a 
an orange smoke flare that will leave a bright trail to your location as it's carried by the wind. And a green dye marker that will turn the water surrounding you a bright fluorescent green easily spotted by aircraft. To help potential rescuers find you, you should consider carrying some form of communication, either a VHF radio or a cell phone. And to keep them waterproof, consider carrying them in a Ziploc bag. Mayday. Mayday. Boaters should be knowledgeable about the forms of communication that work best for the area that they're boating in. For example, not everyone uses VHF radios, and we all know that cell phones don't work everywhere. A person's chances of surviving a cold immersion are increased tremendously with physical preparation, mental preparation, heat retention, and the ability to self-rescue, or a timely rescue by others. You check your indicator? It's good. All right, let's go. Right. That preparation includes clothing, equipment maintenance, and that includes your life jackets, reboarding devices, passenger briefings, and practice. For example, can you reboard your own boat from the water? A key element in preparation is a float plan. Now a good float plan includes the names of every passenger aboard, the destination, departure and arrival times, the description of your boat and equipment, when and who to call for help, and a backup plan. And that float plan should be left with a responsible individual, a person who will know what to do if you're overdue.